create a VRP group for the management VLAN of WLAN. So we need to configure this one as a management group and make sure the virtual IP cannot be the same as the physical IP because this is the virtual IP. Okay, anyway, the virtual IP cannot have the duplicate on the physical IP address or else the VRP can't be performed. Configure VRP group for the service VLAN of WLAN. And later on, we're going to bind this one, the service VRP, into the VRP management group. And the last one, ensure that the source port IP address of the AC is the same as the virtual IP address of the management VRP group. And here is the command for the master AC. So we need to choose uh, which AC will become the master AC here. So the first one is just an option. We can just using the command VRP recover delay and change the time. So the 30 here is referred to the 30 second. It's using the second to do the calculation. The VRP recover delay. So it will going to take how long for recover. In the next one, we're going to create a virtual interface. So this virtual interface is the interface VLAN 10. We're using a command IP address 10.1.10.100 followed by the submit mask. Okay, so this is how we assign the IP address to the interface VLAN. And then we're going to enable the DSCP on this interface. So this VLAN 10 is belong to the management VLAN. So it, it will be it will be used by the AC and the AP later on. So I'm using the command VRP. Okay, we just um, look for the red color highlight command here. So the first command is the VRP followed by VRID, virtual router ID. So this one will be the first virtual IP I going to configure. So I give the ID number 1. So for this virtual router, I will assign the IP address 10.1.10.1. So this is the virtual IP I'm going to use in the virtual router ID 1. In the next one, we also can using the remote time delay. Okay, we can put the number over here, 420 seconds. This goes for us um, to enable this um, pre mode because um, to prevent the prepping happening to our AC. In the next one, we can set a priority for this interface too. So for the VRRP, by default, all the priority is always belong to um, the 100. Okay, the default priority is 100 for VRRP. For the VRP, you only choose the highest value become the highest preferred one. So right here, I want to make my AC1 become the master AC. So I need to using this command here. I modify the default 100 priority become 120. So that on when the AC1 and AC2 is already um, configured all the VRP, the AC1 will automatically become the master. And the next one, going to the system view, configure another virtual interface. And this time we're going to configure the VLAN 11. This VLAN 11 is belong to the service VLAN. So as usual, we create the IP address, okay, assign the IP address, and then enable the DSCP, select interface. So right here, they also have its own virtual IP. In the virtual IP, I'm going to use 10.1.11.1. And please take note over here, the first uh, virtual, the virtual router ID is being used. So we cannot use the same virtual router ID or else they come out the error. All right, so 
here I'm going to use VRID number 2 and then don't forget to set the preamble time delay so and the most important part here is configure the the track I mean VRRP because this one is the service VLAN on the top one the VLAN 10 is belongs to the management so if I want to buy the service VLAN into the management I need to do it by this way so VRRP VRID2 track admin VRRP interface to the VLAN 10 so this VLAN 11 we're going to buy into the VLAN 10 and they follow the virtual router ID1 and end with the unfurl down so here is the example to configure the backup AC so same again create a management VRP group in the VIPs VLAN 10 assign the IP address DSCP select interface so right here they're using the VRID number 1 virtual IP is the same 10.1.10.1 .1. so AC1 and AC2 sharing the same virtual IP right here you notice they actually didn't activate any the VRRP priority because it will go into use the default priority and the priority is 100 then we're using the admin VRRP VRID here we're going to tell to this um, VLAN interface this virtual IP is belong to the management VRRP so the follow one for the VLAN interface 11 the interface VLAN 11 assign the IP address enable the DSCP server so we just do the same thing as what we did on the AC number 2 so you will notice on the VLAN 11 you don't need to touch on the priority because after this VLAN ID is already bind into the VLAN ID 1 it will always follow the VLAN ID 1 priority so if the, v, um, the AC1 is already configured the priority for the management VRP group 120 so the AC1 will have the highest priority here ok now we have done to configure the VRP. the next step is configure the touch SP So I believe this configuration I pursue you on the previous um previous slide. So to enable that is very simple. We just go to the system view using the hash sp service followed by the ID number. So please give the correct um, local IP address and the peer IP address. For this hash sp right, we are using the physical IP address. It's not the virtual IP address. And the next one, you can try to modify the retransmit timer or the interval timer. Okay. Anyway, this is just uh, optional. But after we enable the SSP service, then we go to the SSP group. Inside the group, we will buy on, we will buy the service just now we create. So just now the SSP service is belong to the ID zero. So the buy service here we just put zero. And don't forget, buy the VRRP group into this SSP group. The command we use here is track VRRP VRID1 interface VLAN 10. So right now the VRRP and also the SSP service is already bind into the same SSP group. Okay, all in the same group right now. And return to the system view. SSP service type access user SSP group so that for the access user AP and of course include the DSCP or we could do using the SSP group number zero to share the status and lastly don't forget to enable the SSP so the command to enable that is enter to the SSP group and then use the command SSP neighbor So try to do it on the AC2 also with the same configuration. 
you can see from here is nothing much different so the only one is the, the IP address must be matched okay on the AC2 we're just doing the reverse way so the local and the peer IP is become different verifying the configuration okay right now we inside the AC1 and we want to check whether the VRP is already up or not so we can use the show command called display VRP brief so from here we can able to notice right now we have two virtual router ID number one and number two and both of them is belong to the master here because we set the priority become 120 so the SC1 will have the master for this virtual IP VLAN 10 is belong to the management VRP VLAN 11 is the service so you can see on, on the type that they show you the admin and the member to show the HSP group we use the command display HSP group 0 so it will to show you the ID number the group ID okay what is the VRP interface so my main VRP interface is VLAN 10 because I set this one as my management VRP group and my group status is master right now is active so whether the link is already up or failed they always show you inside the group status so no need to worry how to check it see um, the link, link with whether it's up or not and here is another um, very um, useful command display AP off so we can always using this command to check the current connectivity status uh, for all the AP so to show you the table like this include the MAC address of the AP okay what's the group name the AP currently join the IP address for the AP what is the model for the AP so right now the status right is normal or fail okay here this is NORI stand for normal the state is normal currently is uh, already connected STA right now have no terminal connected to the AP and we try to go to the AC number 2 in the AC2 we use the command display AP off and this one will only happen to the standby AC so the only difference here you can able to see is the stand over here is called standby AC2 will know itself is belong to the standby AC so we also can try to use this command display HSP group 0 to check the status inside the AC2 so this is only happening when the master AC is 40 so when the master is 40 what will happen when you try to display the HSP group over here you notice right now the group of the VRP status now become master is no longer a standby anymore and the group status is independent independent why they show you this status because when the master AC is already 40 in the network there they have no other ACs running the VRP so this is the reason why they can't able to scan other AC which is belong to the same VRP group so right now they are thought I'm the only person access in the network who using the VRP so become independent And the next one also same happening to the command when you try to using display AP all so this one is inside the AC2 you notice previous one is in the standby and now they change to normal state when we're using the show command display VRP brief so the standby state inside the AC2 now also turn become master so here is a comparison of the three backup mode. So I already covered the three different types of all those backup. So over here they show you the SSP 
into a link with the VRRP and also include the dual link backup and this one don't running the SSB and the last one is N plus one backup so what's the difference here the device model and the version for the HSP VRRP so the model and the software version of the master or the backup AC must be consistent, must be the same. So if you run, want to run the HSP, either running the dual link or the VRP, we need to make sure the model and the software are the same. When running the dual backup or the N plus one backup, the master and the backup AC can be the different model that allow us to do that. But the version must be the same, the software version. So let's look at the characteristic. For the HSP mode backup, the switch over implemented rapidly with little impact on the service because when we enable the HSP and together with the VRRP, right? So if you have a lot of the, the frame packet we're going to send through the network. So they will increase a little bit impact um, on the service. So they have a lot of the packet there right in the, in the network. But this is not a big issue, okay? Because they only focus on the high reliability. So when using the HSP, right? They always have the high reliability when trying to compare with another type of the backup mode. For the dual link backup or the core backup, it's only provided the basic backup function. When they compare with the HSP, they have a lower reliability. And this one will be sent to the N plus one backup. For the application and the scenario, HSP. So this would apply to the scenario that require the high reliability. It's stronger recommended to using this HSP plus the VRRP or the dwelling link. For those scenarios that require the high reliability. For the dwelling backup and the core backup, it's applied to the scenario that require the low reliability. For the N plus one backup, is applied to the scenario that requires the low reliability and low cost. Okay, this is a summary. So I did I explained some of the overview of the HSP. Include the principle of the HSP. Uh, HSP. The main application scenario of the HSP and also the configuration. 